Welcome to Tony Talk. Welcome to Tony Talk. How's everybody doing today? This is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talk. So I wanted to come today um, and speak on the interview of Van Jones of Jay-Z on his show to open his show as his first guest. A lot of people asked for my opinion, so here it is. So, you know, you had this presentation of black excellence. You had this stage, CNN put these two African-American men on the stage and they were going to project the arrival of the American diverse dream. The problem is none of it's true. You know, I felt that the first guest for a show on CNN hosted, hosted by an African-American male should not have been Jay-Z. I felt like it should have been someone who could speak to the material conditions of black folks and Jay-Z can't do that. It came out in the interview. I understand that everybody might have liked it, but you really got to question your own politics if you like that. In so many instances, what we see is a celebration of black excellence that never happened. In so many instances, many people don't know where they live. They don't under, and I'm talking about black folk right now. They don't understand the dangers of showing white folks a bunch of black millionaires in the middle of uh, America where black people in Ferguson live under ticketing schemes, black people in Flint still have lead in their water, black people in Alabama live in a condition where the UN visited and said that they live in third world conditions today. And that's just three places. You know, here we got Skid Row, largest aggregation of homeless in the nation. It's 60% black male. Black males. We're 2% of LA. When you think about that, you know that the national reality for the black experience is working poor or poor, but yet we project this black excellence. And people will say, what's wrong with that? Don't we want to project what we want to be? Well, the problem is that you, you're talking about a political show. This isn't an entertainment show. And that's the problem with CNN's kind of format more recently is that our race is used as entertainment instead of a space to actually make clear the, the reality of America's historical sins and those sins impact on today. So, you know, you had this, this vacuous representation of black life through black excellence in a nation that has hookworms and lead in the water instead of bringing somebody who can speak to those conditions, whether it be William Darity, whether it be uh, Thomas Shapiro, whether it even be Byron Allen, or even myself, you brought on Jay-Z, and what he spoke to is this vision of black America that comes from a very limited understanding of black America. It's not his fault. We've been celebrating this stuff for about 30 years now, 25 to 30 years now, since the Cosby Show first hit the air. You know, Jay-Z goes into about him and Ava DuVernay on the phone and them wanting to show Blue Ivy running the country None of that gets black people, black dollars, to fix black conditions. What are we talking about? I, I think for, for a lot of us, we don't know the difference between politics and entertainment anymore. And we don't know the difference between people who know some and people who don't. And what I saw is two people on the stage that don't know enough about black America. Jay-Z spoke to this concept of no more first. And, and, and I, I really think that the problem with the concept is it... it, it presumes that we've had a, we've had access to markets see I think that what was what, what you know he spoke to we don't want to see we, we want to get past where black people do their first well I don't think you understand the material condition of black people in Lake Providence Louisiana I don't think you understand the material condition of black people in Lowes County Alabama I don't think that Jay-Z understands that he lives in, a, in an aberration. It's like a lottery winner telling other people, well, we should just play the lottery to feed our families. Fundamentally, what you see is when someone says to you that they don't want to deal with no more first in a country that has chattel slavery, in a country that to this day suffers from the consequences of the color of, of law, like shown in this book here what you see is that they don't understand blackness in America and how suffocating it is this isn't a, a time period to be trying to talk about this thing like it's the Hatfields and the McCoys in terms of race it's a time period where we all need to get a better understanding and we need to have spokespeople who get on platforms that speak to that material understanding I tell you all the time, middle black families worth $1,400. But somehow that middle family that's worth $1,400 wants to see a million dollar Jay-Z. Because it makes them feel better. 
That is vacuous politics. I tell you that now because Jay-Z cannot speak to your condition and he actually covers it like a decadent veil. I want to share a piece of the article that I wrote called The Decadent Veil to give you some context, then we'll come right back. So in this, uh, what I have as a concept is that, they, that black celebrity has largely been used to cover up black poverty through things like this interview, what we saw, where you talk about a bunch of black people having money and access that never happened in this country in any kind of, of real meaningful way. Jay-Z and Van Jones sitting on the stage does nothing to solve the material conditions of black folks. What can solve it is that platform being used properly and bringing on people who will challenge and test power. What we saw instead was a, was a coding of ego. What we saw instead was Jay-Z talking about sitting down with Donald Sterling and talking it out. Let me, let me read a section from the, from the Decadent Veil so you can get a little bit of where I'm at with it. This is a piece I did a few years ago about black celebrities serving as an illusion for black wealth. I now undertake the daunting task of clarifying the new veil of economics that has covered the struggles of a generation. The decadent veil looks at black Americans through a lens of group theory and seeks to explain an illusion that has taken form over a 30 year span of financial deregulation and newfound access to unsecured credit. This veil is trimmed with million dollar sports contracts, rock nation tour deals, and designer labels made for heads of state. As black celebrity invited us into their homes through shows like MTV Cribs, we forgot the condition of overall African American financial affairs. Despite a large section of the 14 million black households drowning in poverty and debt, the stories of a few are told as if they represent those of millions, not thousands. thousands. It is this new veil of economics that has allowed for a broad swath of America to become not just desensitized to black poverty, but also hypnotized by black celebrity. How could we not? Our channels from ESPN to VH1 to even CNN are filled with presentations of black Americans being paid a king's ransom to entertain. As black celebrity has been shown to, to, be, to millions of people millions of times, the story of real lives has been lost, and with it the engine that thrusts forward the demand for social justice by the masses. Young black men from ghettos across America that used to dream to make great changes in racial inequity now just dream to be a millionaire and be like Mike and dunk a ball or dance on a stage. The decadent veil not only warps the black community's vision outward to a larger economic world, but it also distorts outside community's view of black America's actual financial reality. This is the problem with Van Jones sitting with Jay-Z on his first interview. It validates black, black excellence as a concept. It creates a narrative for those people who don't have exposure to black folk across this country. That black folk don't need no infrastructure in Alabama. That black folks are not poor across this country. And none of it is true. The fundamental problem with the decadent veil is that don't nothing under it get fixed. So, you saw the next thing you saw was uh, Van Jones speak to us having a Black Future weekend instead of talking about Black History as so much or something. I don't know what he said. It didn't make much sense to me. The material condition of Black folks today directly ties to government locking Black folks out of, of access. You know, I'm pulling up the color of law again. I'm set to meet this author, um, Rothstein. In about two weeks in, in Louisville, as we do a citywide reading of this book, I, can, I recommend you pick it up. I recommend you read it. Then go back and watch the ignorance that is Van Jones' interview of, of Jay-Z. And you begin to understand. You begin to understand that, that speaking about Black Future Weekend allows you to ignore the realities of Black Present. It allows you to ignore the fact that black people across this country don't have enough to be part of this country. The thing about the Black Family Feud video that Jay-Z did is it projects an aspiration that America don't deserve. It projects a overcoming a diversity, a Obamization of America that America don't deserve. It projects something that doesn't allow you to get the material things you need for your family because they got to see Blue Ivy be president of some, I don't know, Star Wars America in the future. 
Jay Z said he's not worried when when Van Jones used the word worry. He shut Van Jones down and says, "I'm not worried for my daughters. I'm hopeful." And he says he says he's giving them of the amount of info and the amount of love. That's the two things he said. He didn't say nothing about the amount of wealth that he'll be able to give his kids. He didn't say anything about the material wealth that black folks across this country lack to be able to give their own. This is the problem when you have somebody who has political, a political stance that is pretty much vacuous, empty. They don't understand the purpose of the interview ain't to tell me about your daughter. See, that's what happens when you mix these entertainers with politics. The last person to do it right is right over my shoulder. That's the last person to do it right. Where you speak of, speak about not only your own condition, but you speak about other people's condition. I, I feel like what 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 you start to see is that Jay Z don't understand the wealth and advantage of his current position compared to other people. He's created a, a false narrative that other people can can access what he access. As if it's still 1993 and they still locking people out with the Telecom Act of 96. Go Google that. You, you, you start to see that Jay-Z lives through the projection of being able to access an Obama White House that did nothing for black folk. In so many ways what we see is that we had a dialogue that never should have happened between Van Jones and Jay-Z on CNN in the middle of a time where we needed a dialogue about everything that black folks are going through across the country. Fundamentally, I feel in, in, in a lot of ways we look at these, this, this thing and we see a Donald Trump America and, and everybody wants to stand against it but we forget that Donald Trump was partially created by hip-hop. The validation of Donald Trump in the popular culture's mindset. You know, I'm pulling up an a, a image right now that shows, you can go Google this video. The, the, the many, many times that Donald Trump was mentioned in a positive light in hip-hop songs. You got Puff Daddy standing with him. You got, you got you, Donald Trump was the, was the reflection of what you get when black folks become aspirational in a country that has locked them out. Do you have the right to want a family and a home and everything else? Yeah. But the structures under which you decide to do that must be changed so that it's not just you with a home in a white neighborhood. It's you and your community in a home. You know, I, I, I saw a few more things. I saw Donald Trump's. The mention of Donald Trump and him being a super bug. I didn't understand what Jay-Z was saying. I'll be honest. I, I think that you got a guy that's really wealthy in Jay-Z. And he's growing his hair. And he's trying to change his image. But he don't got it. He stumbled and fumbled around this super bug like analogy. But what he failed to understand is Donald Trump ain't no super bug. He's just another bug. Another billion dollar bug. He's the consequence of a generation of black folks with vacuous politics led by Jay-Z and others. He's the, he's the consequence of the validation of the imagery of the striver over a communal mindset of sharing with others. Donald Trump is a reflection of us in some ways. The dangers of us. The dangers of why we wanted to see Van Jones talk to, to Jay-Z and didn't understand that the first guest is, is, is materially important on, on, on a show. You know, on my show, my first guest was one of the leading economists in the world, and Matt Brunick. And he talked about the, the, the real data that just came out of the Federal Reserve on where black folks are at. On where black folks are at. Are you, are you trying to sell a show or are you trying to tell people the truth about black folks? Because you took two black men up on a stage so you know that people are going to walk away with a perception about black folks. This is the danger of black folks in entertainment right now. What you see is that it, it reflects an imagery about black life that we're, we're hardly able to deal with taking the main stage. What black America needs to do is start to understand 
who needs to speak for us, why they need to speak for us, and where we need to go. We got to start moving forward. And you, st you know, my my opinion is is reflected really clearly in this thing when I when I watch Jay Z try to answer a very basic question that Van Jones posed to him about unemployment and, and black hiring, and he gave this very very like limited kind of answer. It, it just showed he don't know the, the he does, he does, he doesn't know enough to pivot on a, on a political show. So he so Van Jones asked him about these new numbers. I did a video on that that you can check out. You can see it right here, but uh, you can go to YouTube and check it out. But like what what I what what he he starts to say is is it's not about money. Treat me bad and pay me well. Well, that's not the problem that black folks face, and it is about money for black folks that are are, are starving across this country, structurally starving. I I don't think that Jay Z understands how to answer that question and how to tell Van Jones that the numbers are bad and that, that they're boosted by Uber and that the reality is that many black people are not even uh, uh, applying for jobs because they've been shut out so long. That's the answer. And the problem again is when you put that answer to Jay-Z and he gives back an answer that it's not about money. A bunch of white folks, senators, could listen to that and think it's really not about money when it is. I think we got to get back to understanding the reality of where we're at and where we need to go. We need to demand better. We need to demand people who speak to our, our conditions, who make clear that our conditions are not great, and help us grow.